Welcome to learningayurveda.com. Today we are discussing the fifth chapter of Ashtanga Radhya Sutra Sthana. It is called as Dravadravya Vijnani Adhyaya. Dravadravya means liquid foods. So this chapter deals in detail with benefits of different liquid foods. First group of waters or Toya Varga. Among them first is rain water or Gangambu. Rain water which has come into contact with Sunlight, moonlight and wind has enlivening quality and improves quality of life. It is satiating, good to heart, calming and soothing to the mind and stomach, stimulates intellect, thin, imperceptible taste, is cool and it is light to digest and it is amrutopama or similar to nectar. Whether rainwater is good or bad, it depends upon the season and place where it rains. Test for quality of rain water. Only that rain water which makes the boiled rice kept in a clean silver plate neither too moist nor change its color is, is considered as good for drinking. Sea water quality. Sea water should not be used for drinking except during Ashwaja month that is in between September to October or autumn season. During Ashwaja month, there will be appearance of Agastya Nakshatra or the star of Canopus, which is said to remove the poisonous properties of water and other things of the earth. Hence, permission to use other kinds of water is allowed during this season. Contaminated water. <coughs> water which is dirty, mixed with mud, algae, weeds, leaves, which is not exposed to sunlight and wind, which is a mixture of old and fresh waters, which is thick, not easily digestible, frothy, contains worms, hot by nature, causes a tingling of teeth by being very cold, that rain water which is unseasonal or though seasonal that of the first rain which is con contaminated with webs, saliva, urine, feces of spider etc and such other poisonous materials should not be used for drinking. Na Nadi Jala or river water benefits. Water of the rivers which flow into the western ocean or Arabian sea which are sweet and which have pure uncontaminated uh, water is good for health whereas that flowing into eastern ocean is not ideal for consumption. The water of rivers arising from Himalaya and Malaya mountains and which gets churned up well by dashing against rocks are good for health whereas, and whereas the same water if gets stagnated gives rise to worm infestation, filariasis heart diseases and diseases of throat and head. Water of rivers of the Prachya, Avanti, Aparanta countries cause hemorrhoids. Water of rivers arising from Mahendra mountains cause enlargement of abdomen and filariasis. Next, Jalapana Varja or avoiding of drinking water. Water should not be consumed or consumed in very little quantity if unavoidable by those suffering from poor digestion power, tumors of the abdomen, anemia, enlargement of abdomen, diarrhea, hemorrhoids, diseases of duodenum, malabsorption syndrome. Excepting for autumn and summer, even healthy persons should not drink excess of water unnecessarily. Person who drinks water in the middle of the meals is, will be normal and healthy. Who drinks water at the end of the meals will become stout and who drinks before food becomes emaciated. Next, cold water benefits. Cold water relieves alcoholic intoxication, exhaustion, fainting, vomiting, debility, dizziness, giddiness, thirst, excessive burning sensation, bleeding conditions due to pitta dominance and poisoning. Hot water benefits. Hot water stimulates hunger, helps digestion, good for throat, easy to digest, cleanses the urinary bladder, relieves hiccup, flatulence, vata and kapha aggravation, fever of recent origin, cold, cough, accumulation of undigested materials, rhinitis, dyspnea and pain in the flanks. Water which has been boiled and then cooled is good to drink and it is light to digest. It's also useful in pitta conditions. Whereas water which is kept overnight is not ideal for consumption and it increases tridoshas. Narikyalodaka or tender coconut water is 
unctuous, oily, sweet, aphrodisiac, coolant, easy to digest and it relieves thirst, it balances pitta and vata, it increases hunger and cleanses urinary bladder. During rainy season, rainwater is best and river water is least suitable for human consumption. So this ends the uh, Jala Varga or water description. Next, Kshira Varga or group of milk and milk products. Generally any milk is sweet in taste, unctuous, increases ojas, nourishes and increases body tissues, mitigates vata and pitta, aphrodisiac, increases kapha and it is heavy to digest and is coolant in nature. Next, cow milk benefits. Cow milk promotes long life, it is anti-aging, rejuvenating, good for those emaciated after chest injury, increases intelligence, strengthening, promotes breast milk production, helps easy movement of the bowels, it relieves exhaustion, dizziness, toxicity, it relieves inauspiciousness, dyspnea, cough, severe thirst and hunger, chronic fevers, dysuria and bleeding diseases. Buffalo milk it is good for people with very good digestion power and who suffer from insomnia. It is also coolant. Next, goat milk benefits. Goat drinks less water and does exercise like walking. It eats pungent and bitter grass and vegetables that are light to digest. Hence, goat milk also carries all these qualities. It is useful in emaciation, fever, dyspnea, asthma, chron chronic bronchial disease disorders. It is also useful in bleeding disorders of pitta origin such as hemorrhoids. It is also useful in diarrhea and dysentery. Next, camel milk benefits. It is slightly dry, hot, sal having salty taste. It increases digestive strength, easy to digest, useful in vata and kapha disorders, relieves worm infestation, it is anti-inflammatory, it is useful in ascites and hemorrhoids. Human milk or breast milk benefits. It is useful in vata and pitta imbalance disorders, blood vitiation disorders, useful in injuries. It is used as eye drops to relieve eye infections and to relieve redness. It is used in tarpana and ashtottana types of eye treatments and also used as nasal drops. Avikshira or ewe's milk. It is not good for heart. Hot in nature, useful in water disorders, gives rise to hiccup, respiratory conditions and it increases pitta and kapha. Elephant's milk is strengthening in nature. Milk of single hoofed animals is very hot in potency, cures water disorders, it is slightly sour and salt in taste and causes lassitude and laziness. Uncooked milk produces excess secretion in the tissue pores causing their blockage, heavy to digest, causes ama and indigestion. It, milk, if it is proper, properly boiled, is similar to nectar, otherwise it is poison. Dharoshna or raw milk drawn directly from the udder to the mouth is similar to nectar, provided cow is perfectly healthy without any infection. Curds has sour taste, it is absorbent, Useful in diarrhea, heavy to digest, hot in nature, balances vata, it increases fat, salmon and strength, it increases kapha and bleeding, it worsens bleeding disorders, it, is, it increases digestive strength and it, it also worsens inflammation. It is useful in anorexia, chronic recurrent fever, rhinitis, dysuria and malabsorption syndrome. Rules for curd consumption. Curd should not be eaten at nights. It should not be made hot. Curd should not be taken along with green gram soup. It should not be taken along with honey, ghee, sugar and amla. It should not be taken daily. If used daily, it may cause or worsen fever, bleeding disorders, skin diseases, anemia and dizziness. Next, fatless buttermilk. Buttermilk is easy to digest, sour, astringent, improves digestion strength, balances kapha and vata. It is useful in Inflammatory conditions, ascites, malabsorption syndrome, u urine infection, dysuria, anorexia, splenomegaly, abdominal distension. It is also useful in indigestion caused by excess consumption of ghee. It is also useful in chronic poisoning and anemia. Mastu or supernatant liquid of curds. Mastu is similar to buttermilk. It promotes movement of fluid inside body channels. It cleanses body channels. It relieves constipation and it is easy to digest. Butter. 
but it is aphrodisiac coolant improves skin complexion strength and digestion digestion strength it is absorbent useful in diarrhea balances vata pitta and detoxifies blood useful in chronic respiratory disorders leading to emaciation hemorrhoids paralysis cough the butter made directly from milk is absorbent useful in bleeding disorders and useful for eye disorders next ghee or clarified butter ghee is ideal for improving intelligence memory digestion strength long life semen or sexual vigor and eyesight for children the aged those who desire more children tender who desire tenderness of the body and pleasant voice for those suffering from emaciation as a result of injury to chest who have who are suffering from herpes injury from weapons and fire disorders of vata and pitta origin poison insanity and fevers ghee is very suitable of all the fatty materials used in diet ghee is the best it is coolant it, it is best for retaining youth capable of giving thousands of good efforts by a thousand kinds of processing old ghee or purana ghrata old ghee is used in the treatment of intoxication epilepsy fainting diseases of the head ear eye and vagina old ghee cleanses and heals wound next milk preparations or fat rich dairy products such as kilata piyusha kurjika moreta etc are strengthening increases sleep and kapha causes constipation heavy to digest and aggravate tridoshas milk and ghee obtained from cow are best and those obtained from ewe's milk least best this completes the milk group next is ikshu varga or group of sugar cane juice and its products properties of sugar cane juice it is laxative heavy to digest unctuous nutritive improves weight increases kapha increases urine volume aphrodisiac coolant useful in bleeding disorders and is sweet the tip of shoots of sugar cane has a salt taste if the roots shoots and worm infested parts of the cane is crushed together the juice gets mixed with a dirty material it leads to burning sensation indigestion and constipation the pondraka variety of cane is best in view of its coolant effect thinness and more sweetness of its juice next to it is vamsika variety of sugar cane fanita or half cooked molasses fanita is heavy to digest increases the secretions in the tissue pores and causes mild increase of doshas and it cleanses urine next guda or jaggery well washed and well refined jaggery does not increase kapha to a large extent increases volume of urine and feces if it is not properly prepared it causes intestinal worms increases chance of kapha disorders in marrow bl- blood fat tissue and muscles old jaggery is good for heart and should be consumed freshly prepared jaggery increases kapha and causes indigestion hence old jaggery is always better for use next matsandika or brown sugar prepared from sugar cane matsandika or brown sugar khanda or sugar candy and sita white crystalline sugar in their succeeding order are better meaning that uh, the white sugar is best they are good for emaciated and the wounded the cure bleeding diseases and aggravation of vata next yasa sharkara or sugar prepared from a herb called as yavasaka is similar in properties of sugar but is bitter sweet and astringent in taste all types of sugar are useful in burning sensation thirst vomiting fainting and bleeding disorders among the products of sugar cane sugar is the best and fanita is the least preferred product honey is good for eyes it breaks up hard masses relieves thirst balances kapha useful in toxic conditions hiccup bleeding disorders diabetes or urinary tract diseases skin diseases worm infestation vomiting dyspnea chronic respiratory diseases cough cold diarrhea cleanses wounds heals wound quickly increases vata honey is usually dry in nature and has astringent and sweet taste crystallized honey or madhusharkara is similar to honey in its properties honey kills if it is used after heating and by those suffering from great heat 
if it is used during hot season or in hot countries or with hot foods so any processing of honey which leads to its hardness is not ideal for consumption but a honey it does not cause any harm when it is used uh, in warm condition in vamana therapy or vomiting treatment or when it is administered as niruha or decoction enema because it comes out of the body before it undergoes digestion taila varga or group of oils oils the properties of oil are generally similar to the source of oil or oil seeds sesame oil is the most important among all the oils sesame oil cleanses and detoxifies skin good for eyes pierces into deep tissues it is hot in nature and balances kapha it's useful for both obese and emaciated people it's useful to relieve constipation and worm infestation when it is processed with other herbs it is very beneficial in various diseases castor oil castor oil is bitter pungent and sweet in taste it promotes natural movement of body fluids my it's mild laxative it is hard to digest it is useful in enlargement of the scrotum abdominal disorders diseases caused by vata and kapha ascites intermittent fever a yeah, pain and swelling of the waist genitals abdomen and back it is capable of penetrating deep into the tissues it is hot in potency and has bad smell oil of red variety of castor seeds is still more penetrating hot in potency and sticky it has a bad smell sarsapa taila or mustard oil it is pungent hot in potency it penetrates deep into the tissues it mitigates kapha it reduces the quantity of semen and vata it is easy to digest it, pro- it causes bleeding diseases it causes rashes on the skin it may cause a skin disease hemorrhoids ulcer and worms because of its hot nature oil of vibhitaka or terminalia bellerica it's called as akshataila it it is obtained from the seeds of the vibhitaka it is sweet in nature cold in potency good for the hair hard to digest medicates pitta and vata next neem oil it's very hot in nature it's bitter antimicrobial useful in skin diseases and it mitigates kapha next taila of uma it is generally correlated to linseed oil it is hot in potency it may cause skin diseases and it may aggravate kapha and pitta next vasa majja and medas that is muscle fat marrow and fat character from animals they mitigate vata they cause increase of strength they cause increase of pitta and kapha and they are similar to properties uh, with the meat of animals from which they are obtained next madhya varga or group of wines all alcoholic beverages including wine in general stimulate digestion help taste penetrate deep into the body tissues hot in potency give satisfaction to mind and give nourishment they are slightly sweet bitter and pungent in taste sour at the end of digestion laxative slightly astringent confer good voice health intelligence color and complexion easily digestible beneficial to those having loss of sleep or excess sleep they are beneficial for both lean and stout persons they are non viscid capable of entering through minute pores and cleansing them mitigate vata and kapha all these characters can be attributed only if they are used judiciously if they are used excessively they act like poison fresh wine is hard to digest increases all the doshas whereas old wines are opposite to this next contraindication for wines wine should not be consumed hot it should not be consumed by person undergoing virechana therapy that is purgation it should be avoided by hungry person wines which are very strong or very weak which are very clear like water or very turbid and those which are spoiled should not be used for drinking next sura or beer sura cures abdominal tumors enlargement of the abdomen hemorrhoids useful in duodenal diseases it is lubricating hard to digest mitigates vata causes increase of fat blood milk urine volume and kapha sura prepared from vibhitaki is not very intoxicating it is easily digestible good for health not so harmful 
in wo- which is useful in wounds, anemia and skin diseases. Next, Yavasura or Sura prepared from barley. It causes constipation, it is not easy to digest, non-unctuous and aggravates all the three doshas. Next, Arista or fermented decoctions. Arista possesses properties of the materials from which it is prepared and is more intoxicating of all alcoholic beverages. It cures diseases of the duodenum, anemia, skin diseases, hemorrhoids, dropsy, enlargement of the abdomen, fever, abdominal tumors, worms and disorders of the spleen. It is astringent, pungent and it aggravates vata. Mardvika or wine prepared from grapes. It's good for heart. It promotes natural movement of body fluids. It's laxative, causes a slight increase of pitta and vata. It cures anemia. It's helpful in diabetes, hemorrhoids and worm infestation. Karjura or wine prepared from dates. It is inferior in properties than that of grapes. It aggravates vata and hard for digestion. Next, Sharkara or wine prepared from sugar is sweet smelling. It's sweet in taste, good for heart, not very intoxicating and easy to digest. Gouda or prepared from jaggery. It increases the volume of urine, feces and flatus and it is nourishing and it increases hunger. Next, Sidhu or wine prepared from sugarcane juice. It aggravates vata, it decreases lubrication and diseases of kapha. Obesity, dropsy, enlargement of the abdomen and hemorrhoids. Next, Madhvasava or wine prepared from honey. Breaks up hard masses. It pen- penetrates deep. It, it is useful in diabetes, rhinitis and cough. Next, Shukta or wine prepared from tubers. It increases moisture of blood, pitta and kapha. It expels vata in downward direction. It is very hot in nature. It's penetrating, causes dryness, sour, good to the heart, increases taste, promotes bowel movements, enhances hunger, it's cold to touch, cures anemia, diseases of the eye and worms. Shukta prepared by using jaggery, sugarcane, honey and grapes are easily digestible in their successive order. In the sense that Shukta prepared with grapes is more easy to digest. Next, Aswa or fermented infusion. Aswa prepared by using Tubers, roots, fruits, etc. is similar to the properties of Shukta. Aswa prepared by using Shandaki, that is balls of fried paddy mixed with spices, dried in sun and then deep fried in oil and by other materials which has turned sour by lapse of time are appetizers and easy to digest. Next, Dhanyamla, that is liquid prepared by fermenting the water in which Rice and such other grains, pulses, etc. have been slightly cooked or merely washed. Dhanyamla is purgative, penetrating, hot in potency, aggravates pitta, cold to touch, relieves fatigue and exhaustion, increases appetite and hunger, cures pain of the urinary bladder, ideal for use for astapana basti or decoction enema, it's good to the heart, easy to digest and it balances vata and kapha. Savirika and Tushodaka also possess similar properties, cure worms, heart diseases, Abdominal tumor useful in hemorrhoids and anemia. They are prepared from dehusked barley and the barley with husk. Next, Mutravarga or group of urine. Urine of cow, goat, sheep, buffalo, elephant, horse, camel, and donkey. These aggravate pitta. They are non unctuous, penetrate deep, hot in potency. They are pungent with salt as its secondary taste and they cure. They are useful in worms. Dropsy, abdominal enlargement, flatulence, colic pain, anemia, aggravation of kapha and vata. They are also useful in abdominal tu- tumors, anorexia, poisoning, leukoderma, skin diseases and piles. They are easy to digest. Thus ends the chapter of Dravdravya Vijnani Adhyaya, fifth among the Sutrasthana of Ashtanga Hridaya. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please feel free to like and share. Thanks again.